How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to another bonus edition episode of the Couch GMs podcast, where we recap the Couch GMs World Cup. If this is your first time checking it out. The Couch GMs World Cup is our four-year, 30-person fantasy football experience, trying to figure out who is the best of the best. This week, we're recapping week 13, which means there's one week left of the fantasy regular season. Yes, we've made it. Only one week left if you play fantasy the right way. Now, the NFL did have some big news uh, with some, or maybe I should say some big injuries with guys like Kenny Pickett needing surgery. He's going to miss some time. Uh, the big one was Monday Night Football, Trevor Lawrence going down after a pretty back and forth game and unsure of his status there. But George, Tyler, and myself, we'll be back on Friday for the traditional episode of the Couch Teams podcast. We'll break down all the big news and give you all the updates. It's week 13. We got a lot to talk about. Let's get into the Couch GM's World Cup recap. All righty. And as always, your friendly reminder to check us out on YouTube as I'll have the scores and stats and all that good stuff up on the screen or on Spotify because they now have video. Uh, but let me go ahead and throw that up on the screen for you. And we're looking at Group A. So this is the Group A standings through Week 13. And I do want to give a shout-out to Ashley Madison, who is 10-3, and 3, clinching a bye. And Kempe, who is also 10-3, and 3, clinching a bye. So these two guys could flop spots 1-2, and two, but they are set 1-2 and two and will have a bye moving forward. Uh, then we have Andrew, who is locked into the playoffs at 8-5. and five, And... Sean with that's chunky is also locked into the playoffs at seven and six. Now Tyler is currently sitting at six and seven, and the other Andrew is at six and seven, rounding out the top six spots. But they are both one game up on seven, eight, and nine as Colin, Cam, and I forget which Schneider, one of those, uh, Nick, I think that is sitting at five and eight. So depending on how they break down, we can go. And unfortunately, Urban Warfare has been eliminated. But let's check out the Week 13 matchups and see how those broke down. As we jump in here to Week 13, then we'll peek ahead at Week 14 and see if we can do any predictions. Uh, Tyler got the victory uh, against Ryan of Urban Warfare, 124.02 to 123.42. So starting out strong with a close matchup, a total of 0.6 zero points differential for this one as always we're going to look at the box score and see how things could have broken out you might not go in as depth as usual because we're going to focus on those guys and as you can see tyler is looking like he's going to make the playoffs but does have tank dell on the ir losing him putting up a goose egg terry mclaurin did a lot of cardio also put up a goose egg thankfully alvin kamara debo samuel christian mccaffrey helped carry him through to a victory on the other side, pretty strong performances outside of Jalen Warren, who had a pretty disappointing day against the Arizona Cardinals with that point six, or I'm sorry, with six point zero. So, not the worst day, but could have definitely wanted better there. Javante Williams and AJ Dillon less than ten, so needs some better production from the running backs, and that's probably why he is in last place. Don't have good running backs, not going to do well in fantasy football. Uh, let's take a look. Is there anything that could have made a big difference here? Uh, I, I guess technically when we're talking 0. 0.6 points, Damian Pierce over Jalen Warren might have done the difference. But if, you know, Tyler plays Jordan Love instead of Jared Goff, he gets his victory as well. So it looks like Tyler won with the perfect lineup anyway. So shout out to him for getting the victory. Next matchup is Kempe versus Cam. Now Kempe took care of business, locking up the bye with a 126.28 victory to 86.36. Any big note? So surprisingly don't see this very often when you get a victory like that but aaron jones was a sunday night uh questionable ended up being inactive and he had a big enough win he didn't have to pivot that and if you also look at kempe's bench really nothing else he could do because everybody else was on by uh so despite having to play an inactive player because of five weeks and a late sunday night in uh inactive still got the victory despite having a zero a negative one nico collins had a big day could be a Big uh, fantasy league winner coming up potentially uh, with Tank Dell going down. Sam Laporta continues to have a strong uh, rookie season. James Conner revenge game was in full effect with 22 and a half points. Cam Sai 
Uh, not a t- terrible day. Uh, 86 points isn't the best stor- score. Just not any really big games. C.J. Stroud only 16. Raheem Mostert only 11. Reese Hall seven and a half. Uh, Amari Cooper 4.9. Cooper Cup 12.9. Like these scores aren't terrible outside of Amari Cooper, uh, but as you see, just not enough to give him the hump. Miles Sanders continues to struggle. Drake London as well. Uh, not a bet the great day for for Cam, but he is still in the hunt as he is currently eight seed at five and eight, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. The third matchup is versus Colin versus Andrew. Andrew definitely took care of business, 157.62 to 88.50. Now, that doesn't mean Colin has been eliminated yet, but Andrew has locked in a spot as all likelihood the number three seed uh, in Group A for the playoffs. Let's check out these scores. Again, Colin, very similar to Cam. Not too many terrible performances. Had a few. Zach Moss is disappointing against Tennessee, being the full-time starter, uh, with Jonathan Taylor banged up uh, last week and probably the next week or two. Uh, Jameer Gibbs was one yard short of a touchdown, didn't get it, so he finished with sub six points. Uh, it's just tough breaks all around. Uh, but over on the other side, we got 157. DK Metcalf started out Thursday night football with a big game. Puka Nakua had the big, long reception. Touchdown finish with 21 points. The Falcons defense with 18 points over the New York Jets as the Jets continue to struggle. Uh, Kyron Williams continues. Tony Pollard. Trevor Lawrence put up 25 despite leaving the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, when Keenan Allen only puts up eight and you still put up 157, you had a great week. So we can quickly check the benches. Nothing really stands out here, but nothing Colin could have done this past week. Already, and our fourth matchup is the other Andrew losing to Nick 106.58 to 114.30. Now, despite the loss, Andrew he's on a four game losing streak, so he was sitting pretty good at six and three at one point. Now, six and seven, still uh, the last seed in the playoffs at six and seven, the sixth seed. Nick is five and eight at the nine seed, so potential to come up now in the couch teams for cup the first tiebreaker is not head-to-head it is points four so that is something we'll take a look at when we go through uh the final standings and potential scenarios that could happen as well let's see if andrew could have did anything different with this bench we'll start there oh i see christian watts on the bench for 24 points and Ramondre stevenson in that flex spot with 2.4 fumbling and leaving the game early not great for him most likely missed a couple weeks. Could even potentially hit, hit the IR for Andre Stevenson. Uh, but we'll get Lamar Jackson back in a must-win game for him. But the 114, Michael Pittman had a really nice day at 22 points. Brandon Cooks got involved with 14 and a half. Austin Eckler, though, continues to struggle when the Chargers only put up six points on the New England Patriots. 3.7. You hate to see that from a guy like Austin Eckler. And Patrick Mahomes, another Subpar performance for where you drafted him, what you expect from him, 13 points. Obviously, it's better than Baker Mayfield, who he played against, but not a great day for Patrick Mahomes in this matchup. So the final one is, like I mentioned, Greg Ashley Madison got the victory over Sean. Uh, Sean is 7-6, and six, 109.60, uh, lost to 129.56 as Greg continues to put up points. And got the victory and secured a body week. Pretty much started on Thursday with Dak Prescott's 28-point game. CD Lamb's 26-point game. So that stack has been working wonders for him. Uh, Tyreek Hill. So wide receiver one and two in fantasy, I believe, is going to make him a pretty hard team to beat during the playoffs. With the best defense despite getting minus one point. So... Shout out to Greg, but let's preview quick. We haven't done this yet in the World Cup, but let's preview the matchup for week 14 and see what might happen. So the first matchup we'll talk about is Tyler, who is the five seed. He plays Kempe, who is the second seed. Now, Kempe can't be kicked out of bye, uh, but this isn't like the NFL where you can rest starters. So Snyder really needs this win here to not get bounced out of the playoffs, but he has a tough matchup with the number two team. The other, the next matchup, uh, Colin, who is looking on the outside, looking in at the seven seed, gets to play Ryan, who is three and ten, currently projected to win. 
it is only Tuesday at the time of recording this, so lineups are not set. Uh, so don't pay too much attention to projections, and you shouldn't pay too much attention to them anyways, uh, because nobody really knows. We just have to let it all play out. Uh, but Colin has a good shot of getting a victory this week and wants to hopefully pass somebody to squeak his into the playoffs. Uh, same with Andrew. Andrew is currently the sixth seed. He needs to win. He loses to Cam, who's only one game back out. That could shake some things up. Andrew and Sean, they both look to be in the playoffs, uh, but they're going to face off and they're going to mess around with seeding. And then Nick, he has a tall task to, he'll need some help being the nine seed. He is five and eight, and the six seed is currently six and seven. So he has an outside shot, needs some things to go his way. Uh, but Greg has a buy locked up and will probably be a tough one for Nick to get. So let's take a look again at group A, look at their standings here. Um, and we're going to pay most attention to these four teams at six and seven to five and eight. I sorry, five teams. So five teams fighting for two playoff spots. And let's check out the points for. So Tyler is currently of that group, has the most points. So that'll help him. Uh, then it would be Andrew of Chaos Reigns, then Colin, then Cam, then Nick. So that's how the points four would break down. Definitely exciting to see how this one finish and make sure you're tuned into next week to see who are the official playoff bounds in the first year of the Couch GMs World Cup. Let's jump over to group B, which is my group, where I unfortunately uh, took a loss this week uh, to Marcus, but we'll check out the standings right here. So Bree has a buy locked up at 11 and 2. Shelby also has a buy locked up at nine and four. So they are the top two teams in group B. And here's where it gets real interesting. Three through six are all seven and six. Then number seven is six and seven. So we have five teams as well fighting for four spots. Uh, Sheeler of, or Def, some people might know him as at five and eight, Josh at four and nine and Aaron at two and eleven have been eliminated from playoff poten potential, but they can definitely play spoiler. But before we get into what's going to happen next week, let's take a quick look back at what happened in work week thirteen with these matchups. Here's my matchup: one twenty three point three eight loss, one thirty eight point five two. Now the good news is, is if I would have played. Any of the other winners, I still would have lost. So I, despite a good week, I was still the sixth highest score. That's Group B definitely had some disappointments from some people. A lot of big uh, separations in point differential. Uh, my matchup was the closest of the five. And we'll take a look here at the simple box score. The CJ Stroud, 16 points. Hurts, Brees Hall at 17. Uh, Josh Downs only getting 2.9 here definitely could have helped missing some guys on by might get them back later this week but marcus has a, been a team i've been talking about if you've been following along with just continuing to put up points has a really good team i mean look he had sam howe on the bench with 19 puka naku on the bench with 21 zach charbonnet on the bench with 16 like he has depth he had the falcons he had a really great stream they got 18 this week you know Really solid team here from Marcus, and despite his slow start, he is really coming on strong. He's on a four-game win streak, sitting at the number three seed and looks to be well-situated for the playoffs and definitely a team that could make a run for a championship in year one of the World Cup of Group B. Next up is Bree. She dominated uh, 123.48 to 59.82. Let's Bree's killing it all season, and look at this. This is a 59.82 with a valid lineup. Yes, Ramondre Steven did get hurt, but only 2.4 points. DeAndre Swift, three points. Calvin Ridley, 5.3 points. Deontay Johnson got a touchdown, still 11.3 points. Logan Thomas, two. Zay Jones, 10.3. Tutu Atwell, 1.4. The Cowboys defense, minus one. So definitely a tough matchup for Hayden. He is currently in the sixth seed at seven and six, and still he will need a win this week to secure himself in the playoffs ironically i'm 
pretty sure he plays me this week. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Shelby clinched her by with a 136.66. Ooh, that's not a good ending number right there. To 93.34 against Josh. Josh has had a struggle with it uh, the last couple of weeks. That has continued as he is now on a three-game losing streak. Dak Prescott is a big name this week. James Conner is a big name this week. 136 points when Hollywood Brown puts up zero. Christian Kirk puts up three, leaves the game with a groin injury. Trey McBride, he looks to be a solid tight end moving forward, so that was a great pickup by her. Uh, and she still had Josh Allen on by, Devonta Adams on by, Ravens defense, Dalton Kincaid. So he, she has some options and will be another team that will be definitely worth paying attention to down the stretch. Now here might be the biggest upset of the season so far for the Couch GMs workup. Aaron, who was previously one in ten or one in eleven. Got a victory, one twenty eight point nine two over Neil, who fell to six and seven, putting him on the seventh seed instead of in a you know five way tie from three to seven. He is now the guy that needs some help, doesn't control his own destiny, only putting up eighty eight point oh eight points this past week. Tank Dell getting hurt didn't help. Kate Otten putting up a goose to get the tight end. Jalen Warren struggled. Let's check out his bench, though. Christian Watson on the bench. What a help. Wouldn't have gotten over the, the hump. Buys really hurt Neil this week when he needed to get a victory. He's not out of it. He could still shake things up. But one, shout out to uh, Aaron for continuing to put his best foot forward, playing a little bit of spoiler. This matchup right here, it's not easy to play fantasy football when you're 1-11. and but to still put guys, take the time to set the lineups when you need to uh, and help and potentially spoil someone and get a much needed victory. This this game right here is something we might be looking at three years if you know Aaron doesn't win a championship in the next two and he get qualifies for a World Cup spot based on overall win percentage. This one victory might have put him over the edge. So keep an eye on this one as we move forward. And just a really good week. CeeDee Lamb, DK Metcalf, I mean, has to be pretty good when you leave Thursday night with two guys and you already have over 60 points. Like, that's a great week. Derrick Henry, vintage week for him with 100 yards, two touchdowns, 24 point fantasy points. Solid week all around for LeVan and proves to show that whoever has him in week 14, it is not a guaranteed victory. And then Reed is another team uh, to pay attention to. He's currently the five seed at seven and six, basically eliminating Sheeler last week with a 159.9 to 113.50. 159 points with Patrick Mahomes, with Austin Eckler, but Nico Collins, Sam Laporta, Debo Samuel, Joe Mixon. Those guys all put up 24 plus. Great week for them. Again, a lot of bye weeks for the losing team. This week 13 buy seems to really have given a lot of teams a lot of problems. All right, but let's jump into week 14, do a quick preview, see how they're going to match up. Like I mentioned, I play Hayden. We're both seven and six. I'm currently the fourth seed. Hayden is the sixth seed win, and we're in. The loser still has an outside shot, but would need some help. The next one is Shelby versus Marcus. Uh, Marcus would need a win because he's currently the, th the three seed to guarantee himself a spot. Again, depending on how things fall, a loss wouldn't completely eliminate him, but he would need some help. Neil needs a victory, but has to play the number one team and Bree has to get a victory this week and then need some people to lose. And uh, the, the good news is we'll see how that changes. As we go back to the league, but Neil was one of the top league scorers uh, at least a couple weeks ago when we checked. So, that then Reed needing a victory gets to play Josh. And then on Fort Aaron and Sheila play for funsies this week, as this has no playoff implications. None of them get to play spoiler. Uh, but the other four games will be definitely worth monitoring to see how that moves forward. And again, we'll check out the league. Now I mentioned points for Marcus is in first. So I am I am less than one point ahead of Neil. So if I were to lose and Neil were to win, 
uh, it will come down to points. And so I would need to score one more point than Neil or he could pass me in points. Um, that is probably the closest one. Hayden, points wouldn't help him. Reed, he's going to have to win to get in. So me and Neil are the two big ones. Uh, and, and Hayden, obviously, if Reed or... So if Neil... Reed and Hayden all tie. Neil will most likely will get in because of points. Uh, Neil could pass me, depending on what the score outcome is. Uh, and those are some of the things that we're paying attention to. And again, make sure you check out next week's World Cup recap. Maybe I'll see if I could have the the other two join me for a special episode to talk about the first year and all the playoffs and maybe do a little bit of predicting and all that fun stuff. So make sure you stay tuned to that. One more group to recap. That is Group C. That is Georgia's group. Now, in this group, it's a little bit more. There only one buy has been locked up. That is Brandon at nine and four. Uh, George tells me the buy has been locked up. I see he's at nine and four, and three other teams are at eight and five. So, but Brandon is the second highest scorer, and Unless, you know, 30 points for their uh, – looks like Brandon's going to get a buy, and we'll see how that goes the rest of the way. But like I mentioned, George, uh, Josh, Jason, Doug, all sitting at 8 and 5. That is the big one. And then 6 and 7 are 6 and 7. That is funny. Their records are 6 and 7. They're also sitting at 6 and 7. I believe they play each other. So winner gets in for the final playoff spot. Uh, Anthony, not Anthony, Mikey B, maximum effort. I cannot remember your name off the top of my head. We'll get to that in a second. And then Anthony of Cincinnati's own have all been eliminated. Uh, so unfortunately, and then just because George took the time to write it up. Uh, so he gets to play the two and five. I should have read this beforehand. This is great airtime. But so Brandon has one game up on two through five. He's the second most points scored below him, who below George, who's the second seed. He should have a bye, but could be displaced if losses and someone has a big week. Um, and like I said, George is pretty much locked into a bye because of the points thing. Uh, but if he puts up a 50 and somebody else puts up 150, that all can change. So it's not a given conclusion. But let's recap week 13 to see how we got to where we are at this moment. George got a big victory over Brandon, 133.56 to 117.26. So that was a big win for George to help solidify his shot at a bye. Uh, Dak Prescott, we talked about him a lot when he, we have big games. Rashad White, a guy that people keep counting out, but he has – all the opportunity in the world and keeps taking advantage of putting up 18 points. Chris Olave got 14 points without a touchdown. Taysom Hill, 14 points in that shootout with Detroit. DeAndre Hopkins had a nice day. A.J. Brown, 15 points without a touchdown. So overall, good performance there. Brandon, unfortunately, lost Tank Dell, and that could have been the difference maker if he would have put up the 13 points he's been averaging. Let's see, let's just take a look at that. What was his average points? Uh, it doesn't tell me on this one click, but nice. But if you were to put up, you know, 13, 14 points, which is definitely doable, what he's been doing the last couple of weeks could have been there. Or if you would have played Michael Pitt over Tank Dell, he would have got a win. Puka Nakua over Tank Dell, he would have got a win. So the good news is for Brandon, he has replacements. Uh, and George had some people on by, and we'll see how these teams go. The next matchup is Snyder versus Anthony, and this is what I'm talking about. George looks good right now, but a game like this could change things up. If, if George pulls an Anthony and only puts up 92.8 and loses 162.68 or somebody else that needs to pass him gets a big, big week. Um, not saying it's going to happen, but worth talking about. Jordan Love, we haven't talked about him yet. Big game, three passing touchdowns, 23.68 fantasy points. Uh, he's now his fourth game with three passing touchdowns, becoming a pretty reliable fantasy option 
over the last couple of weeks. Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Debo Samuel, man, Garrett Wilson, 6.5, the only, and Jaden Reed at 3.6, only down spots here. Could have played Brandon Cooks and Chris Godwin a little bit more and had Lamar Jackson and the Bills defense on by. So a lot of points for Josh there. Anthony really has struggled uh, to find some consistency. Not obviously can still put up points on some weeks and just hasn't, uh, but like guys like Cooper Cup underperforming, Drake London underperforming, Ramondre Stevenson getting hurt didn't help, Miles Sanders underperforming. I mean, he's got to be the only guy we've seen with CeeDee Lamb and not get the victory. CeeDee Lamb and Christian Watson and not get the victory. That's a tough loss for, for him for sure. The next one is Coleman versus David. Now, this matchup was almost as close as the one that we saw in uh, Group A. It's a .68 differential with David getting the victory 104.42 to 103.74 and keeps his playoff hopes alive at 6-7. and seven. Much needed there as knocked out Coleman, unfortunately, uh, as he dropped to 5-8 and eight and moved to the ninth seed. Trey McBride, let's look at the benches. Oh, I see a ton of teams on by. That's not – look, both of these benches, 9.8, 10.8, a lot of people on by. Um, it is worth noting that David, if he were to sneak in, he'll most likely get Justin Jefferson back. That could be huge. We'll have TJ Hawkinson next week because he was on by. So definitely have to pay attention to who he's playing. Uh, which is Jim, which we could talk about his game because he got the victory to move to the sixth seed, 111.84 to 92.48. And a little preview, Jim and David play each other next week. So definitely the most pressure matchup potentially of the final week of the regular season. Jamar Chase. What about that game from Jake Browning, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, the Bengals, upsetting the Jacksonville Jaguars, falling 149 yards and a receiving touchdown, playing Zach Charbonnet on Monday night. Really good win there from Jim. Bench-wise, 52 points on the bench. Chuba Hubbard with 22, Geno Smith with 29. I mean, can't go wrong with that. He stinks when they're on the bench, but that's a solid depth pieces there. Uh, so not too much we could have done there. And this final matchup is just in getting the win over Doug to move them both to eight and five, 130.96 to 113.80. A lot of these guys we've already talked about or hit on. Devon A. Chain, we haven't mentioned him, so I'll bring him up. 23 points, two rushing touchdowns again as the Dolphins put up over 40 points again this season. Uh, but that wasn't enough for Doug to get the victory because of guys like James Conner, Tyree Kill, David Montgomery had a nice day, but mainly Sam Laporta and the Buccaneers defense. So good wins there. Now let's do our quick preview of week 14. All righty. So the first matchup we'll talk about is George gets to play Josh. Now, if Josh, we can do the math on the, the next screen here, but Josh would need almost 100 points more than George this week to get a victory. Not impossible, uh, or I say not to get the victory, but to pass George for a bye. Not impossible, but highly unlikely. Brandon plays Coleman. This game has no impact on the... Um, Playoffs, I guess technically if Brandon loses, he could get bumped if somebody has a a big week, but that'll be uh wait and see. Uh Jason gets to play Anthony uh when he's in, nothing to worry about there. Uh the next one is the one we talked about, David and Jim facing off six and seven, six and seven. Uh who wins? Well, we don't know but that person will get in. We do know that. And the final matchup is Doug and Mikey B. Mikey B is limited. So very similar to Anthony and Jason. Seating could change, but doesn't have too much of an impact on the final playoff 
predicting. So one real key matchup to work to check out here. Uh, and Josh would need to score 67, 68 more points than George to pa- win and score 68 more points to pass him. Uh, win and a Brandon loss, he would need 30 more points to pass him. Um, Jason, he would need 80 more points than George if they both win to pass him. And a Brandon loss, you know, could so a lot of things could shake up. We know five of the teams that are going to make the playoffs in Group C. One matchup will die the sixth seed, uh, but this one through five could shake up depending on points. Not unlike, pretty likely that a lot of this will stay the same uh, depending on wins, losses. But uh, I mean, Snyder's in the three seed. He could drop down to the five seed if he loses to George and these other two guys win. So those are the kind of things we're talking about in Group B. So that pretty much does it for the Couch GM's World Cup recap of Week 13. I'll go ahead and pull that off the screen. Before we get out of here, though, as always, we do a quick... Definitely think I clicked that a little too fast, so I probably cut off, so I apologize. Uh, It is the Patriots and the Steelers this week, and um, I was joking around in our group chat with George and Tyler, uh, front of the show, Campy is in it, and we were all talking about how we have tickets to paint drying. Uh, we're going to just watch the photo slideshow on our, let our TVs go to sleep over watching this game. Uh, no clue who's going to start this week for the Patriots at quarterback. Uh, no clue who's going to start, or Mitch Trubisky is going to start for the Steelers. And let's just say, according to DraftKings, hashtag not a sponsor, but they definitely could be. Uh, every anytime score is like plus 100 plus 200 like typically like there's at least a couple guys that are in the minuses are like barely plus in for betting odds uh, so this they're expecting a very low scoring game uh, I guarantee you Al Michaels is not going to be in this one as all well. but you have to play somebody I mean I don't know who you play the Patriots have allowed uh, 10 or less points, I believe, in three straight games now and are 0-3 in those three games. So their defense is playing well, but their offense can't move the ball. Maybe we finally see Malik Cunningham and they just go, you know, really crazy offense and have some fun with that. Maybe Mitch Trubisky gets to uh, have some fun and throws it around the yard. So maybe if you need to, you got to play George Pickens. But my recommendation for you guys is – if you're playing anybody in this matchup, hopefully you already have a playoff spot locked up. If not, I'm trying to avoid this matchup at all costs. As always, thanks for checking out this bonus edition episode of the Couch GM Four Cup. There's one week left in the fantasy regular season if you play fantasy football the right way. Good luck out there. Thanks for checking it out. Hope you're excited about some of these matchups. George, Tyler, and myself will be back on Friday morning breaking down the rest of the slate game. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, TikTok, all the good places. And we will talk to you all next or later this week.